You and I, we have been talking for a good number of months now, since October, I want to say. Oh, I could check if you need to. No, no. I At least in our email chain, I want to say it's been since around that time we were talking about something. Since 25th of October, 2020. Got a, a oh, nice yeah. uh, channel that's not in English. 
Well, I'm not English tubes. You're, you're not not English tubes. It's very impressive that you can you can speak so fluently. I don't uh, speak fluently. I just pretend to. You, you hang around Americans for a while. You you get uh, a few stock phrases mm -hmm. uh, and you expand upon it. Of course, I did learn some English in my literature studies. I've forgotten it pretty much since. So what you have is like uh, the remnants of my capacity to speak English. What kind of creative things do you like to work on? Uh, at heart, I'd say I'm a video editor. That's what I do best. I write them, of course. I perform in them. I'm a terrible actor, of course. Oh, well, yeah. But I guess editing is the one thing I think I'm good at. I don't think a lot of people understand everything that goes into it. It's fun. It's matching sequences. It's trying to find uh, a natural flow between things that do not go together. Mm -hmm. I think that's the challenge in many ways. Trying to create the illusion of a continuity where there is none. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm not nearly as good in the visual department as you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with creative things, you and I, we're, yeah. we're creative guys. We feel oh, good yeah. yeah, when we make creative stuff and uh, uh, -huh. uh -huh. I have so much creativity, you know? Oh yeah. It oozes. And uh, you and I have a list of, of various things to talk about here with Cobra oh, yeah. and creativity. It's a pretty interesting aspect of him, how creative he can be and the places he could go with being a creative artist. Uh, he wrote a special blonde. That was a beautiful piece of literature. Yes, really good romance novel, really focused on all the things I like to read about. When It was uh, tight, it was taut, it was bulging, and yes. other gay adjectives. He had a nice cherry red speedo on, he had a big oh, yeah. a double beautiful chin. Beautiful mane of hair, remember? Oh yeah, yeah. Did he have a French accent, by the way? I kind of remember he had a French accent, that hero of, uh, it of was the, the special blonde. Either French or Spanish. It was uh, definitely not so it country was western. Either my lineage or yours, of course. Because we, as we all know, you are a, a Spanish Lothario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. Do you think his uh, short story was written in a state of heightened uh, concentration? What a, that's a great question. Um, he exhibited a lot more talent than you would expect from him. He used words that he never speaks he was i i want to say thinking about books he'd read probably some harry potter books he was pulling words from those that i remember came up often yes egads forsooth all that uh there was one uh riley w-r-y-l-y yeah and it's it'll be like a wry smile it's something that you never hear anyone words, speak no. he has an affinity for certain flowery terms because they're they're fancy they kind of give you feelings of of being in kind of like a magical place or a, a you know a gothic room a, a witch's circle things like that uh he enjoys that stuff when you say a heightened state of mind were you thinking was he on some kind of uh stimulant or ritalin or something like I'm that i'm just thinking maybe a ritalin or adderall can actually produce some results when it comes to the old jfs oh yeah oh very positive results he just because needs... his music was actually better when he was on something. Really? In my mind, you know, smoking cannabis in the clock tower is actually a pretty decent stab <laughs> at the first draft of a <laughs> mediocre song. Yeah. You know, it's not a layering <laughs> of 55 minutes because it's, it's pretty much what it is. <laughs> he created his own religion, which, you know, to make your own lore about the three prime evils and their histories and how uh, there was a big battle a long time ago between the uh, Cobra Angels and Demons. You know, that's, that's pretty good. It's not bad. That's beautiful, actually. Yeah. yeah the Cobritius, the Cobralinos, and the Cobralinos, <laughs> and all that shit. It was beautiful. <laughs> he enjoys cooking, and that's something we'll probably get into with uh, oh, yeah. when, he, when he finally makes it big and gets some attention. Just to cover it quickly, he comes up with really unusual recipes and he goes out of his way to cook stuff. He doesn't necessarily have to do the things he does when he makes his abominations. My my thinking about it is that he cooks like a video game would. Oh yeah? 
you know, he has those food items, you know, and he tries to put them in, you know, the little the little squares and you, you're going to add this, subtract that, <laughs> multiply by this, and you get uh, fiery fish pizza, I guess. Quantity is a big deal. He really seems to think that the more ingredients you put into it, and especially if there's a high quantity of that ingredient, it's going to yeah, be that much yeah. better. That's the Tony Hawk Pro Skater logic of eating food, you know? You're gonna put more kickflips on the fucking sandwich, and the sandwich will be better. Preferably, you've made it into a low-gravity sandwich. It can revolve faster as you spin it. More points, of course. Get that. Then you go into a manual, all that. Ranch dressing modifier. Uh, Rodney Mullen's uh, famous uh, ranch dressing dark slide 250, of course. Yeah, yeah. Good combo. Uh, speaking of combos, he likes to make unusual drink combinations and name them. That's pretty creative. I like the thing that he calls them drink combos. Yes. Because in my mind, you know, they are mixologists. They're not comboologists. No. It is very so uniquely I... him to call the drink combination. That's something he has really stuck to. Yeah, that's the Street Fighter 2 approach of making drinks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is like a video game element now that I think about it, but the way he thinks about health, grinding stats, you know, for the f past few months, he's been grinding his wisdom stat. Oh yeah. Trying to get smarter. Him watching videos. You know, oh yeah. He's trying to get to the core of things and he's trying to, to see the truth, I guess. He's putting in the time. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I feel like the target though, it would be like the slime monster. It would be the lowest enemy out there that gives you 0.5 experience for his wisdom yeah, yeah. stat. Each time you attack them and say, but, but. <laughs> they're butt slimes. They're butt slimes, yeah, yeah. It's gonna take a lot longer for him to level up and actually uh, gain anything from this content he's been getting into. <laughs> but imagine if he actually watched a, a halfway decent channel. Yeah. Imagine Josh as a connoisseur of bad movies. Oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be strange, at least. Yeah, and, well, he'd have to understand how to download movies and all that. He still doesn't know, but that'd yeah, be yeah. amazing. I would love to have him talk about any movie. If he did movie reviews, I would love to hear that. I'd love to see him speak about, you know, the classics of horror movies, like uh, oh. old John Carpenter movies or, yeah. uh, or even, you know shitty Italian movies. Last House by the Cemetery or something. I've heard of that one. Okay, Lucio Fulci movies, I guess. I always think of just the really, really old classic monster movies uh, that I, I feel like you have to know about them if you're going to be into horror stuff, but Frankenstein, like the original thing. Dracula, Mummy, okay. uh, the, even, the whole... Uh, even older. Universal, yeah. That, that kind of stuff. The they, Man Who Laughs. It's a silent movie about a dude that's got a <laughs> fucked up face. That's right up your alley, Josh. You'll like it. Is that the guy who has the big smile all the time? It's the dude, I forget his name, but he's the gendarme in Casablanca. Okay. The Laughing Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was the inspiration for the Joker as we know it. I was really stuck on this earlier. Of course, he uh, likes to mess around with Sean and come up with his axe. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Man, I, I started thinking what it would be like if Josh just always had Sean in in his memory. Like He doesn't yeah. know where it came from. It was just in the house. And then Clint didn't know where Ooh, Sean man. came from. Ooh, man, that's, that's a high concept, dude. I like it. I like it a lot. It, it suggests... It's like uh, that Twilight Zone episode with the guy that has all the power in the family and he's a toddler, but it's Sean who's rearranging reality. Yes. <laughs> it's Shin Megami, uh, Sean Megami Tensei. Sean Megami... <laughs> That's really good. We, we found some Thanks. gold there. That's a gem. I had a question about him and uh, with his projects. You know, you've probably had a friend who went without a job for a while and you find that yeah, they're working me. oh yeah uh oh, yeah that's me they they wind up working on creative projects that you would never oh, expect yeah. them to do because they are so bored if josh suddenly lost a lot of his time and he was forced to work a regular nine to five job do you think he would give up on making his music or doing anything like this i think he would be doing something that's more time effective 
maybe. Oh, interesting. Something that he actually can do in 15 minutes. That's why his old videos were so good. You know, he had 15 minutes to do them. Yes. He was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell you about my day. And this is a, a, a Sherry Delicioso cigar and do a mobster voice. And they were very tight in terms of comedic timing. Oh, yeah. He would come up with a theme for the episode and then wrap it up. He had to be done in 15. Um, other than that, I think I wrote down fashion and obviously music he he makes music he's pretty creative when it comes to that well, he's I, been making the same song for fucking four years now yeah it, it is the same song he's just kind of rearranging it and putting new uh garage band beats behind it i'd like to hear him try and do a john scatman type of sound something like that <laughs> someone uh had him try to sing along with one of uh scatman's songs and it did not end well well, you need to be, you you need to have a special type of stuttering, I guess. Yeah. Well, Josh does struggle with his speech, his dictation. No, mm. it's not the same. He has so much words in his mind; they don't s seem to come out in the right order. Yeah, but if he were scatting. If he were scatting, well, he's been scatting on stream at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, Did he... you hear the, the streamer was actually talking to his toilet? Yes, yes. That's beautiful. That was upsetting, Trying kind of alarming. Trying to encourage it to grow, I guess. Yeah, he wants Did it to be know? big and strong, but he did not know. Strong. He didn't know he was being recorded, which indicates that there's another side to him that we don't see. There's a facetious side to Josh. The way he was giving it it's baby, a baby talk. Toilet. Yeah. And he came back and said something like, I made a poopies, I feel better now, and started giggling to himself. Uh, I feel better after making poopies. <laughs> It's like the Tim Burton reboot of the Cobraverse. It's a twisted toilet, and he actually lives in the fear that his toilet will eat him, so he has to encourage it as, mo oh, as much as he can. And know? feed it. Not just feed and it. And feed it. Yeah. No, it's I, like I guess... the, uh, it's the little shop of horrors, but with a toilet. Feed me, Seymour. Yeah. 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 Okay. I like that. You know me. I, I try to come up with all kinds of ways to make the lore a little more twisted, just like Tim Burton yeah, would. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> and the, the idea that he really does have to feed that toilet so he eats terrible food all the time, so he makes real big dumps. Well, you know, you know toilets are very specific about what they will eat. Oh, yeah. And he has to... It's not for him that he actually eats all the spice. It has to be spicy enough <laughs> for the toilet when it has been filtered through his body. <laughs> uh uh, and he can't just puke into it. It has to be... No, no. Yeah. Puke is too acidic. Yeah, you that's know? right. It has a too high a pH content. Gotta have the, the good pH level. Exactly. Oh, yeah, because you don't want to destroy the porcelain. <laughs> feed me feed more. Feed me more. So that's, that's what the toilet is saying. Oh. So how would, it, how would it punish him if it didn't get enough food? What would it do? It would overflow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Be very Getting inconvenient. As well. And of oh, course, yeah. next time he gets an apartment, the toilet is there waiting for him. <laughs> it's like a, a cursed toilet. So he's always guaranteed to have a cursed toilet and Sean somewhere near him. Okay, let's imagine he's been evicted from his house. Yeah. He's sleeping on the bridges, but at night he hears... <laughs> <laughs> and there's a toilet behind him. <laughs> <Feed me> more. <laughs> 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 
does it have tentacles and stuff to get around with or what kind of appendages would it have no, it's it's much more like a dalek at this point oh okay yeah it has the nubs uh the little nubs on the, on the <laughs> side and it floats of course <laughs> it's a wireless toilet <laughs> but it still makes a skittering noise when it moves it goes pop or pet pop but Josh but honestly it would be pretty damn funny if he found a thesaurus and started trying to inject words that make zero sense in his sentences I'm pretty sure if we got him on good clean CBD he would be speaking like Shakespeare <laughs> something to you know clear the mental fog you know oh maybe yeah his back hurts we know we don't know his back seems maybe pretty fucked from where i'm standing hurts. so maybe it's just you know back pain that's trying to interfere with his uh cerebral uh machinations suffered from cerebral pelosi his his lower back his very far lower back no i would say his ass. mostly the upper back because i think he has some kind of, of scoliosis really at this point Oh, yeah, yeah. Watch his curvature of his spine. The, the upper part is very much fucked up, and it's very painful. My dad had that. Mm. Precisely the same. You know, it's the we're going to be a hunchback in 20 years look. And uh, do you figure the dog collar is just kind of a substitute neck brace? Oh, yeah, sure. But he needs to weigh it down on the other side. He puts it on the front. He should be weighing it down on the back, of course. Now that you mention it, there was that cutout that was uh, being passed around constantly of him kind of looking at something with his arms behind his back and his big yeah, tall the, socks. They have the tentacle look. Yeah, he did kind of look like an old man whose his back was aching in that posture. There's a song about that. It's called Achy Breaky Back. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm trying my best here, dude. I'm trying to entertain you. It's not easy. It's like it's like talking to tech to speech when it's when it comes out, you know? Like, okay, we have a joke here. Let's translate it in French. Okay, let's translate it in English. Let's I did have the creative projects he should get into, but let's 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 oh, you yeah. uh have oh, yeah. your your time here you've got some good good i lists. actually hoped you would have some of on your end you know i have a lot i have a lot i'm gonna go with what i think is the heavy hitter okay in a world where king cobra jfs actually has the chance to work on some projects mm -hmm. let's say it's tv let's say it might be a streaming service netflix gives him a deal he has a few projects he can work on my first choice, since they do have the license at Netflix, would be Straight Eye for the Queer Guy, a show where Cobes tries to get gay men straight in their fashion choices, of course, and it might include some gender relations. You said it's about turning turning gay men straight? No, 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 no. You've seen straight, and you've seen queer after the straight. Right, guys. it's about getting straight guys and, and making them more fashionable because making apparently them fuckable for gay men. <laughs> so we're trying to get gay men fuckable for cobes, which is in itself a conundrum. You know, it is hard. It's not well. It could be, but it's it's also a question of what is the JFS fashion fashion sense, the JFS fashion sense B -b 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 buddy imagine you have a cute guy coming in yeah not going out not getting out coming in and you see a dude that's dressed perfectly fine you know he has a nice silk shirt i guess uh the straightforward pants that are cool the the little shoes you know they have those little shoes <laughs> little shoes yeah the blazer uh -huh. he's like a fashion dude then Cobes destroys all his fucking wardrobe and makes him dress, I don't know, like a gothic uh, cowboy. Five jackets. Yeah, he just takes a sander to the, to the pants yep. to start with, paints the jacket, gives Paint, him one oh, of his shirts, yeah. of course. Paints it, yes. Uh, maybe the dude has a, a cute little hat. Well, that gets stepped on, of course. A cute little hat. Make it like a, making the most mediocre version of that outfit, I guess. That's, and if he's wearing you know, any kind of cologne, it's got to go. Ditch it, throw it in the trash. You're going to rub gross. tactical soap all over, not just your skin, but your clothes. There's going to be smears of poor quality soap all over you. A mixture of pork brains, shrubbing, and <laughs> pheromone soap. Pork brains, yeah. That's the baseline. 
so that dogs like you. <laughs> Suddenly, dogs are very friendly. Oh yeah, when you smell like rotted fish and uh, pork brains, <laughs> organ yeah, meats. They, they, they actually try and wiggle and wriggle onto you to get some of the scent, so they'll be fashionable in their own circles. You know, back in the day, I, I used to have a dog and we'd take him on walks. Whenever there would just be a, a dead animal corpse, and yeah. that's disgusting. But for whatever reason, dogs, they just, they, they dive it. They, they, they get, love it. They roll around in it. They cover themselves in the smell. It's some in, instinctive thing. Emphasis on the stink. I just, it's, it's Josh in a nutshell, just rubbing yourself in filth and garbage and dead things. And, and what do you call this this concept again? Um, uh, let I, me rephrase it. It's wonk, wonk eye for the queer guy. You have well-adjusted, normal gay men that come with a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, luxurious uh, dressing style, fashion sense, and yeah. he just fucks it up. Oh, In yeah. my mind, what's funny is that it's uh, applying the JFS logic to conventional ways of thinking. Anything you uh, you wanted to add to... Uh, no. <laughs> it's all been said. Josh, I wish he would get into drawing nude women. Okay. It, you know, he could go to Clint's art college that he works at and get some, some still lifes and get to look at a naked woman. And as yeah. long as he doesn't uh, jizz himself, he could work on doing some, some lewd artwork he could become a uh erotic comic artist or something like that it's a very solid question could he be an artist actually draw things actually draw things i guess he could actually maybe he would be a good uh, caricaturist well you know outsider art is a real big thing for people it who are exist. sick in the head and not classically trained if he were to try to draw a naked woman and see what it looks like going through the josh filter i think it would be pretty fascinating I would love to see it. Uh, any kind of drawing that he would try to do. Because sometimes I'll, I'll see people draw stuff and I can't help but have it be more evocative with the, the way certain things wind up bigger or smaller or uh -huh. just distorted. It can be more impacting than just an ordinary drawing of something. You know, any old excuse for him to look at naked women posing, I think he would okay, love that. Have you thought about him sculpting? Sculpting! Because no. I don't think he has the depth perception for drawing, actually. He likes to touch things. What, what kind of things do you think he would sculpt? Ashtrays. Ashtrays. Okay, that's a good start. At first, it's, it's you know, you, you get it nice and plain. You use the rotating things that you have seen in the movie Ghost, I guess. Yes. He could be doing pipes. He could be carving pipes. pipes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a cobra pipe or a bong. I, just, I like the idea that he would be selling pots. But when you smash it, there's actually marijuana inside. That's there's the that's the inside. front and 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 rupees. Yes, there's rupees yeah, and rupees, pot. hearts. Sometimes some arrows. Bomb flower. Fairy. Yeah, I'd like to see him start by drawing naked women and then eventually make erotic uh, manga. Would he illustrate his own erotic fan fiction? Yes. So when he draws his self-insert character with his uh, giant double chin, as he describes it, that would be there. Self-insert, of course, in more than one way. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think he would just jump on the whole Japanese, uh, you got to censor the penis thing. So that would just be a huge right. black bar. He, so he never has to draw it or well, look at it. not that huge. <laughs> I, I think for his characters, it would be mastodonic. It would be gigantic. If... If Spike TV were to still exist, that's a big if. Uh, they're called the Paramount Channel now. And I don't think they have time for subjects like these ones. But imagine Cobes. Imagine Cobes in the series Ghost Adventures. Have you seen Ghost Adventures before? Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of shows that are like it, where they get all the EVP equipment and they get in dark rooms and ask questions to nothing. Oh, no, there is a ghost in this house. <laughs> oh no, I've heard a, a ghost fart. Oh, you don't tell me they have a ghost farting machine. <laughs> oh yes, they have. That's precisely what Ghost Adventures is. It's five people doing drugs, I guess, because <laughs> I do think they're very much keyed out when they do these things. Oh yeah. They have the wide out eyes, uh, extremely dilated pupils, 
and they go into spooky territories trying to find ghosts. And I think it would be great, you know, if Cobes could have his own ghost adventures. And of course, you just need to take the established uh, formula, people getting lost in places that are supposedly haunted. And you just, and that's the key point here, you do not clue in JFS at all. When there's actually a draft in this apartment or his studio or his flat, I don't know how you call it in America, but he actually thought a, a draft of air was a ghost for the longest time. Open yeah. the doors, his name was Winston. So yes. let's say that it was the adventures of Cobes and his ghost friend Winston, and they were trying to speak to demonic entities through the power of the recording app on his iPhone. Because in Ghost Adventures, they actually have a system that supposedly lets ghosts send you text messages. Text messages? Yeah, that's how hacky the concept has become. Well, yes, it's like the get out of this house, you know, but on, on written form, like, oh no, the, the ghost <laughs> told me to get out of this house. I imagine it's something like a EVP to text translator that they're using. Uh, it takes a noise and it says, oh yeah, this noise means this. It's a DTTTYBG. Donate to talk beyond the grave. This would be perfect because he loves ghost investigations and, you know, he's got his Ouija board. He'd have that around, I'm sure. I do wish that Sean could be involved somehow as a, a vessel, uh, some means of channeling stuff. He's for, a like, conduit. A conduit, yeah. There's, God, it's like when they do a the seance. Vessel. The vessel. There's a, a person who who channels it. Something like that. The, the lavatory? Lavatory? Yeah. The toilet? You give him some grams of, a few ounces of that uh, sticky, sticky goodness just before it. You know? Yeah. You know, to get him right and and well and, and not paranoid at all. <laughs> then you close the you close the you give him the, I don't know a uh, uh, night vision or something. <laughs> Sorry, you know, I just he only started sees night vision him. from one eye. The other eye is looking at the gauges that are on the left on the thing. You know, he would look would so beautiful. funny in night vision, in like a big fisheye lens effect going. Of like his yes, lips and eyeballs GoPro on his face. Imagine the effect. <laughs> you can see individual pores uh, clogging up. It would be beautiful. <laughs> you need just like the uh, the Blair Witch Project. You need a giant booger coming out of his yes. nose, talking about yes. how startled yes. he is. <laughs> so would it be in the Blair Witch Circle? The giant booger. So. You would think actually it being confronted with an actress playing a ghost would actually reinforce his belief in ghosts in this supernatural. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, do you think the actual ghost people, do you think they truly believe in it or are they just kind of along for the ride? I think they want to believe in it because they have a deep seated trauma about somebody dying in their life. Yeah. I mean, if your mother died when you were young, you would desperately try and establish some kind of connection with the, the inframundo. Inframundo? The world below. Oh, okay. I, I just started picturing him running around in the catacombs yes. and how legitimately terrifying that place is. But you know, maybe at some point his wand would actually light up. In the darkness, all the batteries have run out. He's going to be one yes, of those you people. Know, because actually, we were wrong, and he has some level of occult power, but he's never been in an occult situation before. And when the darkness is most dense, he shineth like a light. Of... When he's finally pushed yes. to his limit, yes. it's, it's got to come out or else. Yes. He's been doing chi balls and all this time, and finally there's one that actually materializes, and it solves the problem. I'm going to shoehorn this in here, because you mentioned chi balls. I wish that he got into real magic, like magic tricks. It, it could be something ah. simple, but, uh, you know, get get a little kit from Toys R Us and figure out how to you know, come up with neat magic tricks. Because then he could do something like that on video and say, oh, yeah, that was my chi. That was a chi ball that did this illusion just now. And he could keep up the lie a little bit more convincingly. He finally could knock over, I don't know, a PS2 game. Yeah, with some invisible string or something tied to his finger. He could make uh, cigarettes disappear. He, he used to kind of dabble with that stuff. He had like a Zippo lighter that he would extinguish through unusual means. I know that trick. Every stoner knows that trick. You know, when you take the big lighter and yeah. you put the gas in your fucking hand and you throw a fireball, why hasn't he done that more often? Oh, maybe he doesn't know. 
I, I'm sure he has mentioned it at some point. So how does the trick work? Well, you, you take any kind of lighter that actually has the release valve, you know, and the little thing yeah. that you push down with your with your thumb. Yeah. Thump. You let the gas into a, as tight as you can make a pocket in your left hand. You yeah. can feel it. You can feel your your palm filling with the cold coolness of the gas. You take like three seconds, and the butane is in your hands. Then you go click click with the big lighter, and you turn your palm upwards, and a decent sized fireball, let's say two inches, three inches, shoots up in the air from your hand. Wow! It can be pretty fucking cool. He would absolutely love that. If you want to actually make him be a fire hazard you need to uh, buy the flammable paper that uh, magicians and wrestlers use you put it in your hand you just get a flame quite close to it and it will elevate in the air for like two seconds i i have been surprised when i was thinking about it that he hasn't tried to learn magic it's kind of for whatever reason i associate ventriloquism with also learning to do magic tricks they're just in the same neighborhood for me it would solve a lot of problems. He could use the top hat to hide his baldness. He would be more decently clothed, of course. Oh, yeah. Magician costume. Or or he could do the whole Chris Angel yeah. mind freak. I don't know what you call that sort of gothic alternative thing he's doing, but Josh would love that. What would be his magician name? Naturally, something with Cobra, right? Is there... The Silk Serpent. The Silk... The silk, Silky Serpent. Is there a mythical the big snake? Disappointment. One more time? <laughs> the big disappointment. The... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's so mean. Uh, okay, we've done Ghost Adventure. You could do a, a one and all show that would be like Bar Rescue or Kitchen Nightmares. And Kitchen Nightmares, he would be the Gordon Ramsay type, the, the great chef that comes and grates and rates and raves about your food, gives you advice, admonishes you if it's not good, but, you know, with his own taste of what good food is. At any point, if anyone is boiling pasta and they're wow. about to drain the water, he will quickly intervene, call yeah. him a donkey or something. I'm not sure what uh, Cobra's equivalent would be. A Nimrod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and say, uh, you are not going to drain that water. You're going to leave that in there. It's where all the flavor is. Let me is. taste it. Mm, that's good <laughs> pasta water. Yeah. Get some ashy fingers up in there. Mm, yeah. Not bad tubes. Uh, a little sugar, I guess. Mayonnaise. Uh, ranch. He, he really likes adding ranch to things. And mayo. Yeah, any kind of white stuff, he likes to just pour he it on. He likes white sticky stuff. That's true. Oh, the, the oven. He always blasts it at 420. No matter what. Cooking steak in an oven. Yeah, yeah. Or boiling it. That yeah, boiling steak. You steak. Mean. <laughs> Adding some monster, monster energy, energy drink to, yeah. to the sauce. It's a, it's a night vichy soise. You need to add some monster energy drink. You know, around here, we, we love Halloween in the States. Uh, apparently, we love it more than, I think, any other country out there. We'll have haunted houses uh -huh. all over the place. I think he would really enjoy being a part. Being a haunted house. Being one, you know, being a, a, a goblin or a, a clown, scary clown. Uh, but He would be a scary clown. Yeah. And if, if he could have a, a say in how the rooms work and stuff like that, I think he'd really enjoy it. Okay. I'm picturing it right now. It's a little suburban house. It's perfectly normal. It's spooky, of course. It's not lit. There's a, there are little pumpkins. They're, they're, they're carved and they're everything. And in the distance, you hear a terrible, horrible sound. And it's just Josh playing Say, Say, Say by Paul McCartney. It's and just him it, singing <laughs> down the hallway. Yeah. I like the idea of if you're trying to escape it, it's always just slightly behind you. Yes. And you hear a toilet, of course. <laughs> God, it's such a specific thing to think about. But you know, in Mario 64, there's that piano uh -huh. that bites at you. Exactly. It's like But the, it's the toilet lid smashing. It's the real Ghostbuster toilet ghost version of that. <laughs> Chasing you down a hallway. And for some reason, I still picture the, the piano crashing noise, but it's just the toilet lid with big teeth on it. Yes, well, it's precisely what I was thinking, actually. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's an eyeball somewhere. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you got to run around it a few times to kill it. The eye would be easy. You just need one of Josh's giant wonky peepers in your set. 
But uh, yeah, haunted houses. I think he would love to help design them and uh, partake in them. And he gets to find ways to uh, torture couples. Which he loves. He loves oh. that. He, he really wants them to be miserable. And then uh, the door closed, clunk, and it goes, do you want to play a game? <laughs> Yes. Sean comes out in a little tricycle. <laughs> yes. On the screen, there's Josh as the saw guy. He has his uh, green goblin mask on. That one costume he always whips out that he can the smoke. The green through. ghost. The green ghost. The green yeah. Ghost. Yeah. One or the other. You oh. see this mask? I can smoke through it. <laughs> Let me drink this beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to be able to torture couples. That's too good. There's a ride in Disneyland. I think they discontinued it. It was the space station thing, and it was supposed to be looking at like a captive alien, but then all the lights would yes. go out, and yes. uh, they would have the effect where like there's hot breath on you, and little things like uh, tentacles touching your legs and stuff. I've heard of this one. God, he would love that. If, if he could be, I think they call them Imagineers or something. Oh, yes. Imagineers. And, and thinking of all these ways, just again, like the hot breath of, of having something disgusting on you. He would just be the monster. I wonder if he'd be into that. I wish he could somehow be asked what his perfect haunted house would be like. A gothic clock tower. Yeah, I was going to say, there's going to be bells banging constantly. That's Ding good. dong, all night long, etc. Uh, his, his music would be playing, yep, in the background, which would be quite haunting. Do you remember the game show? It was called Singled Out that was on MTV? Yes, of course, with Jenny McCarthy. Man, I think he would really enjoy that kind of thing. But would he be Jenny McCarthy or would he be a contestant? I am trying to figure that one out. If he would just like to play and be a contestant or if he would be a host and, and wrangle these people and, and you know make uh, nasty jokes. It would be fun to have him try and get directions through an earpiece. He'd always be looking at the wrong camera. No, he would be looking at both cameras. <laughs> There's no wrong choice. You could do either camera. If he had the chance to go on a, a show like Singled Out, where you're, they're trying to pair you up with someone, uh, or even Blind Date, if you've ever seen that shit, I would love to see him on that. A Blind Date especially. Do you think he could be a basic woodworker? I think he would enjoy like wood carving and making little crazy yes. designs and stuff yes. and going just overboard with it because he's already carving wands and stuff like that, but more detailed wood carving, something other than a wand, a, a goblet. I don't know. It's stuff like that would be really cool, especially because I think he really would go crazy with the designs and the level of detail. Is also on my list here that if he were to sell anything besides wands, his blood, his blood, uh, anything that would have power in it, and I use that term loosely, some kind of magic imbued, he could probably get away with selling it. I just don't know what exactly it could be besides bodily fluids. Uh, stones. Stones, sure. Magic rocks. As long as he claimed that he spent a full hour focusing on it while jerking off to increase his, his focus and magic <laughs> and his energy, yeah. uh, then it would be sexually charged and good to go. I think people would buy it. What if he angrily screamed at rocks, giving them <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. If, if he can spin it and say it has my, my angry energy in there and it can be yours, I think it would fly off the shelf. At one point, he actually could have used his hair as binding on the wands. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, little bracelets of his hair, maybe? Yeah. With a tooth in the middle? <laughs> <laughs> I think people would want to own bits like that. If he had a tooth fall out, there would be a bidding war to own it. <laughs> I paid $500 for this tooth, and it's a baby tooth. It's not even on a real tooth tube. <laughs> You know how he collects all the leftover grime? He just leaves it in his pan? Oh, yeah. If he could scoop off a little bit of that and put it into a jar and be like, this is Cobra Spice. Here yes. you go. This is precious. Rub this on your, your pan. Grease it up. It's my dab. And smoke it and it will get you Cobes-like. <laughs> the stuff from his pan? 
I'm getting high of this grease. What about his uh, his plaque? Oh yeah. If he were to oh, really yeah. scrape it off, because you've you've probably seen his front teeth lately. They're they're more plaque oh, yeah, than yeah. teeth. His plaque would be used to make uh, little pearls that would make a necklace. Oh. Yes. So I, I guess the big takeaway yeah. is uh, selling things that came from his body and his selling pan. Himself. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually. I think I'm I'm starting to get actually high from this conversation. Would he ever get into brewing? Maybe. That excites me, the idea. Because, I mean, I feel like, especially for a time, it was a fad to get into home brewing, uh, beer. Yeah. That would be really neat, as long as he didn't blow up his house. Because I think if you do it wrong, you, you can have the gases become explosive. I want to see him brew stuff. Uh, make his own alcohol with lots of yeast and bacteria in there, just having sex with each other. He could be making cheese as well. Cheese! That's bacterial, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. He could probably get some really interesting strains of bacteria going. This is my Robert. It's like a Camembert made by Cobra. <laughs> just got to keep it in a nice, uh, damp, warm environment. And uh, <laughs> there's there's a French cheese that's actually made in beds. Beds the name escaped me. It's I think it's called Quincoyote. It's it's made <laughs> in it's it's fermented in straw that traditionally is used as a bed. And the heat of the person that actually is sleeping on the bed has the <laughs> cheese achieve its uh, rich creamy goodness. I love it. I love the idea of him making that kind of cheese in his bed. Bed cheese. You, you, it's, I got all of his elements in there, all his bed farts and his sweat when he's, you know, sweating out all the alcohol. It's going to be essence of Cobra. Le Roi Gothique Cobra. I want him to make Royal cheese and beer. Royal cheese Cobra. Royal cheese. And it's so funny that the, the basis of making a, a good cheese is having these different types of bacteria. I want that so bad. He needs to make really foul disgusting beer and really really bad cheese what would be the name of his beer cobra craft beer it's too easy it's be a bird wiser could be making his own tobacco i guess also if he had a farm oh well yeah he's talked a million times about his special blend of marijuana I want some kush i want some new york diesel i want some orange bird i want some yeah yeah i want some this i want some that 55 <laughs> fucking strains dude that's too much <laughs> oh, that's my that's my weed we call it the mighty morphin power rangers it's got five colors and it will fuck you up uh there's also that toy he's been p talking about toy yeah you know i would make that toy and it would be so fun oh. that i can tell you because it's so fun he would talk about it, about all the things it would do, but he didn't seem to understand what the actual toy would be. It's a woozle, it's a wazzle. They would love it, they'd want to play with it. It's like Gag, but it's your buddy as well. I'm not going to disclose what I would invent for a toy, but I tell you what. There's still a, a bunch of ideas out there for toys that you can make that people can play with and have fun with, you know. The idea I have for a toy is so awesome. Just a regular toy, nothing perverted or, you know what I'm saying. Um, the idea I have for a toy would be so fucking awesome. I think a lot of people would get down behind it. But um, we'll just have to wait until I build it. I'm surprised he actually doesn't use, you know, the Cobra Craft logo more in his merch. Because his merch is actually the, the worst thing he has ever created or anyone actually <laughs> could create. <laughs> it really does highlight his laziness. He will just grab some JPEG off Google and use the, the paint can and call it a day. Uh, it would be really neat if he could somehow get wrapped into doing uh, tabletop games. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Role playing and D and D and maybe like a light version of that where he gets to be a cobra demon. You can be a dwarf. You can be uh, uh, a wizard. He'd like oh, yeah. to be a wizard. He would love to be a wizard. Maybe he would actually love to be an elf. Really? 
Well, maybe. It's, uh, in my mind, elves can do some of the sword stuff, some of the sorcery stuff. They're a perfect sword and sorcery package. I could see it if he were channeling his uh, special blonde character with the butt yes. chin, double chin. That would be a big, dark elf. Yeah. And plus, elves all have beautiful, luscious hair. Yes, exactly. If he were a, a big, handsome elf, he would certainly go for that. It'd be great to have him try also uh, writing the stories. Yeah, make a campaign. Yeah. And it, it's a shame because uh, I I feel like he would be really into world building and and creating that kind of stuff. But he hasn't been given the opportunity to, to play around in, in something like that yet. All right. Anything you want to close out me. with? I have nothing to plug, really. I, I mean, I, I'm not active in the English-speaking world for obvious reasons. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. No, I mean, it's not obvious. It is obvious. No. It is. Your English is good. My English be good, sure, but, you know, the pronunciation <laughs> and the enunciation of it uh, am very bad. If I, could, if I only had one thing to say, I, I, may I do a can crush for the audience? Yes. Thank you for having me. It was uh, an interesting talk about uh, a very interesting man, I guess.